Hey folks, this is Gene from Wrangle Guy Mountain Biking and on Bike Chat tonight, we are lucky to have Phil Metz, Bike Pro, hanging out with us. All right, folks, thanks for tuning into Bike Chat tonight. I got a big surprise tonight. We are lucky to have Phil Metz, Bike Pro, on Regular Guy Mountain Biking Bike Chat. Phil, thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you. It's been uh, it's been fun watching your show, so I'm uh, I'm glad to be on board. Cool, cool. Thanks so much. Um, one of the things that I found so amazing about opening up and starting this um, Regular Guy Mountain Biking whole uh, thing is the cool friends I've been able to, to, to meet up with. I've met a bunch of folks. Um, and in this case, now I've gotten to meet up with a, a mountain bike pro over here, which is really kind of nice. Uh, I've, I've got some friends that are local that are pros, um, but it's nice to be able to spread out a little bit. And here we are. You're, you're up in the Northeast, right? Um, sort of. I, I, I'm from New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, but I, currently I'm in North Carolina. That's where I go to school. Oh, dude, that's why when I asked you if you wanted to come to Mountain Creek, I thought you were still up in New Hampshire. So I'm yeah. like, all right, maybe he's busy or something. But I didn't realize, okay, so you're – oh, then you're not going to be able to make it. Of course you're not going to make it out of Mountain Creek. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a weird situation. I'm, I'm a little older than me in school, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to college right now. So okay. I'm from New Hampshire, but go to school in North Carolina. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, that, that clears a lot of that up. But what do you, well, you know, before I get into – so – Folks, I've got some questions over here that I'm going to ask my friend over here. But uh, but what are you going to school for? Um, I'm going to school for business and marketing. Um, I actually go to a s- school uh, called Lee's McRae. Um, okay. And actually, it's a school that has a cycling team. It's kind of a weird thing. And mm-hmm. yeah, so we have a varsity cycling program. And okay. actually, n- next weekend, we have a um, collegiate national champs which will be a lot of fun, but you know, it's, you know, we have about 30 kids on the team, wow. uh, anywhere from road riders to myself, like downhill riders. Right. And, um, we, I mean, we've had a lot of like tremendous, uh, riders come through the program. Um, Brent Brookwalter, he was actually in the Olympics this past year. Oh, so now cycling, you're talking road riding then, right? Is that, that the kind of, that that's, what um, this is about, or is it, what, I, 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 I do downhill and uh, do a psalm. Right. That's the the two main categories that I compete in. Brent did uh, road cycling uh, in the Olympics. Oh, okay. So so this cycling program that you're um, – wow, I, I have all these other questions and all of a sudden <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sidetracked because I'm so interested in this. Um, so the cycling program you're in, it's it's like cycling. Oh, any type of – like it's just different types of cycling. It's not just – when I heard the word cycling, I'm thinking road. No, it's it's a bunch of stuff, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, it's a varsity team, and, like, so there's a lot of cyclists going to school for, you know, like, business and biology and, you, you know, all, all those things. Gotcha. Um, but we're under this one umbrella as a cycling team, and it's very unique. And um, actually, like, our the president of the college rides, um, mm-hmm. not mountain bikes, but bikes, we actually went on a ride with him just yesterday. That's so, so cool. It, it's awesome. Like, it kind of blows my mind. Was this a scholarship type of thing, too? Did that help? Uh, Yes. So, um, I didn't yeah, know this is awesome. I want to go back to school. If I had more hair, they might let me back in. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, that's one of the reasons why I'm back at school now is because of, uh, the like opportunity that I've had. Um, it's kind of why I did that, uh, collegiate mountain bike video a while ago. I'm like, I put, put out a lot of videos, so I don't expect everyone to watch all of them. But, um, it's something that I didn't know existed when I graduated from high school. Okay. Um, that I graduated from high school in 2008. And so I'm 26 now and, um, I started school like when I was 24, so two years ago. Mm-hmm. And, um, I really wish I had known about this earlier, but I guess it's a good thing cause I've kind of matured and like I have a better idea of where I want to go, but it, it's really cool. That's awesome. Well, I, I didn't mean to sidetrack us, but I didn't even think about that. And that's, that's awesome. I, I don't, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know about that. Didn't have it with me. Um, so, Hey folks, that's a whole another thing that we could even, you know, you can know about if you're, uh, uh you can get scholarships for this. I, I didn't even, didn't even think about that, which is, uh, the only reason why I didn't even think about it is cause, um, and, and Brian and I did a, did a show on this is about the mm-hmm. whole, how we don't really feel that mountain bike pros really get the due justice that they deserve. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's the only reason why I was, I'm kind of in a little bit of a, in awe thing about getting a scholarship with it. Cause, uh, I, I, I think you, that, that you guys deserve it. Don't get me wrong. I just, I mean, there's scholarships for like people picking their nose for crying out loud. And you guys are doing <laughs> some amazing things. So anyway, that's, that's why I'm, I'm babbling about this. So good for you. That's awesome. 
I mean, we can talk about this later. Like, cause yeah, there, there's, it's, it's a whole nother world that a lot of people don't know exist. Yeah. That's cool. Well, as far as the, the mountain biking stuff goes then. <laughs> um, so, so tell me about the pro thing then. So where do you feel you are with that? And, and how, what, what's it like to even be doing this at a pro level? It's, it's kind of interesting. Cause like, um, when I, when I was younger, um, I, I grew up riding BMX and racing BMX. Um, and my, my goal was always to end up as like a BMXer, uh, you know, either in the X Games or as a BMX racer. Um, you know, the Olympics wasn't a thing for BMX at the time, but it's like, you know, a high level BMX pro. Um, and I moved around a lot because of my dad's job. So I lived in France and California, Connecticut, like all over the place. But when I moved to New Hampshire, we didn't have any mountains. Okay. So I was like 13, 14 at the time. So I really had to like, you know, find something else to do because I like riding bikes, but in New Hampshire, we don't re- really have BMX tracks. Right. So I somehow stumbled upon uh, mountain biking and like I saw like the Red Bull Rampage, which like blew my mind. Insane. It's like, which yeah. is going on, was this tonight? They, they, uh, oh. they, yeah, I got to go watch it later on. Yeah. Yeah. I actually haven't seen it surprisingly. I've, I've been out riding. Good. But um, yeah, so I, like I picked up mountain biking and I... I I had no intention in ever going pro, mm-hmm. like at, at least on a racer level. Like I always saw myself as like more of a um, free rider. Um, okay. Not not so much a downhill racer, but because of um, my BMX racing background, that really helped me translate into the uh, mountain bike scene. And it's actually Mountain Creek where you used or uh, Diablo where right, you, uh, right, right. Yeah, um, where I had some of my best success. Uh, I got second place in the amateur uh, uh, U.S. Open. U.S. Open. Uh, mm-hmm. I was right behind Nico Mullally that year, who is one or two years younger than me, but like mm-hmm. that was a big deal to me. And it was kind of – that was like 2008. It was kind of at that point where I was like, ooh, I might be able to go pro, but like I was still a junior. I was like, I'm still 10 seconds behind the pro. Right. I was like, I don't think I can do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I actually took a year off cause like that was the same year that I graduated from high school. Mm-hmm. And so like, I, I didn't really race uh, in uh, 2009. I took a year off, just rode my bike. Right. Um, and that year like was not a disaster, but like I really like missed racing. Um, so 2010, like I came back and, mm-hmm. um, so Pro in mountain biking is more or less a category. Okay. Um, cool. I'm so ask there's stuff like that. Yeah, there, there's professional as in you're making uh, biking a profession and you're making money. Right. And then there's a category pro. I, I feel mo- like most pros are category pros, if that makes any sense. Right. And so um, I requested my pro upgrade, mm-hmm. which is what you do with uh, USAC. I didn't really have that many spectacular results. Um, got approved, and I had some uh, results. But I think, well, uh, yeah, it was by two, the end of 2010, mm-hmm. um, I'd done a bunch of races. And I had my first pro one, which, like, that just kind of blew my mind. What was race like, was that? What race was that? That was a race at Platico, actually. Platico. Um, yeah, well, fun fact, Richie Rude was on the podium. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I don't know. He must have been, like, 15 at the year, like, I don't know, at that time. But, but um, yeah, so it's like, you know, that was the point. I was like, whoa, this is cool. I can make something of this. Yeah. And, you know, like, for, that was, like, one of the first times I'd ever received money for a finish. It's awesome. Um, yeah, it, like, you know. Not only did I pay my entry fee back, but like I had money to pay for gas and you know all, all that fun stuff that you don't think about. Right, right, exactly. There's like a, uh, more to it than 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 you think. It's 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 it's, mm. it's an expensive sport, dude. You know, I mean, yeah. It, like, I I kind of like that. Um, that it's expensive because it kind of keeps the sport humble. Yeah. Um, because you, I I don't even know if the top forty. I, like I don't know how much people are making in downhill. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, I, I can tell you I've never received any money from a company. Um, wow, it's but, a shame. <laughs> I, well, I'll get back to that. Yeah, I was. Gonna, yeah, the same. Maybe it's not a shame. Maybe it opens up your eyes to more things. But yeah, that's cool. Um. So 
in 2011, like I, that year I did 28 races. Wow. Like it, it was like, I did two races in one weekend. Um, and like, that was my, be- that was my breakthrough year. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like, I did so many races. I had time to kind of try different strategies in downhill because it's, it's a mental game. Like, you know, as much as it is talent, it comes down to uh, your mental um, agility. I don't know what other it's mental. Okay. And I had time to figure that out. And by the end of the year, like, you know, I went from, you know, crashing every run to like having like spectacular results. And by the end of the year, I had a um, fifth place finish in the uh, USA cycling national champs. That's awesome. I was on the podium with Aaron Gwynn, Mitch Rapolato, uh, Duncan Riffle, and Logan Bingley. I was like, what am I doing here? I had like a, just a, I think an Under Armour shirt on on the podium <laughs> with like a sneaker <laughs> slapped on it. <laughs> Everyone's showing there, sponsored by, sponsored by holding their bikes. And then there's, then there's your Under Armour guy up there, right? But you did it. That's so awesome. It must have felt awesome. Uh, I think. Like, yeah, that that was like the best feeling in the world, and like funny enough, like that mountain that had that result is like right behind me. Not even kidding, mm-hmm. because that's where my school is. Would you feel that was probably one of your best accomplishments you've achieved so far, or you still you have to something even trump that? Um, I, that was one of the best results for that time. Okay. Um, la- last like so fast forward, I had like you know I don't want to bore you with my history because that's that gets boring, but. You know, I, I had some good results. Um, I got like two more uh, results on the podium with Aaron Gwynn, mm-hmm. and then I got injured. Uh, what happened to you? Uh, I broke my collarbone, which I've never broken a bone in my life. Shit. And this was right before my first World Cup, mm-hmm. the first World Cup I was going to compete in. And like, you know, for downhillers, like that's like that's where you want to be. That's it. Yeah. And that sucked. That really sucked. Um, so. You know, like I healed back from that and I still had the UCI points, mm-hmm. which is another complication with uh, downhill racing. I could still do um, one more UCI race and that was in Norway. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, my parents were super supportive of me and they helped me get to Norway. Wow. Uh, yeah. And it, like we made a good trip of it. It was awesome. Like mm-hmm. beautiful country, awesome people. And in practice, I broke my hand. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, <laughs> damn it. So, like, I went from having my best year to having, like, one of my not so best. So, that's where and, the mental game kicks in, right? That must have really, that must have really got you, dude. Yeah, like, um, it's, it's weird to understand if you've never broken a bone, but coming back from two injuries, like, it's very weird because, like, you never feel the same on the bike for, you know, a set period of time. And yeah. so, like, I ended up, like, negotiating some sweet sponsorships for the next year. I, like, you know, I rode for Evil, got my first, like, free bike ever, which mm-hmm. is very hard to come by. Yeah. In, uh, yeah. Like, um, for anyone who's aspiring to be, like, a downhill, like, pro racer, like, you know, if you're getting a discount, like, you're on the same level as pretty much every pro because very few pros are actually making uh, or getting a free, are getting free products. Wow. Um, you know, so came in the next year again, it's still within the one year window since I had my first injury. I broke my uh, hand again and it was at that point where I was like, ooh, like I, I was so bummed. I wasn't depressed, but I was, I was just like, man, this sucks. Like, right. um, I, I really need to find like a backup plan. Cause like I, this whole like professional racing thing is not working out. Oh, it takes one thing and, and, and you're out for like a while, you know? I mean, ugh. so, you know, like while I was injured, I used this time to like buy a GoPro, start mm-hmm. setting up a YouTube channel and like, mm-hmm. um, watching videos about like, you know, how to make YouTube videos, record, use camera gear. And like, you know, just like, Learned that kind of stuff, but like I, I tried to keep myself busy. I promoted mm-hmm. a like small little grassroots dual psalm series. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I, I still wanted to be involved with the sport in like a positive way. Right. Like, you know, I've received so much from the sport. I wanted to be able to give back while I was injured. That's awesome. And that was at the same time period where I was like, mm, I need to find a backup plan because you know professional racing might not work out. School might be a good option. Yeah. So that's. Uh, how I ended up where I am now. I see. I see. 
through like this weird convoluted process. Mm-hmm. That, Sorry, that, that, that now that, now <laughs> I see well, now I see why okay now I understand the, the 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 timing and why you're why you're there when you're a little bit older now but but you know what um, not for nothing but um, my nephew is um, is a tight end for FSU okay wow um, yeah amazing amazing <laughs> kid I mean Ryan is just absolutely amazing amazing in every way uh, just mm-hmm. a nice guy and obviously a tight end for FSU physically amazing um, but it's one of those situations where. You know, his parents are like, look, if you can go pro, you're going pro. Because just like you, you could always go back to school, but especially in the football world, you know, they do get paid a hell of a lot of money. So even if you sit on the bench and you go pro, you're making a hell of a lot of money. And if that doesn't yeah. work out, you can go back to school and do it in style because you are got crazy money. So I, I, I commend you for giving it a whirl because – I mean, if you've seen any of my videos, you know, I'm freaking 45 trying to learn how to manual and I fell on my ass and I've been out of it for like a month or two because I can't even, so you're not going to heal like that. So you, you got to give it a whirl, especially if you love it, which obviously you do. Um, that's, you know, it's the way to go. And, and you've got something a lot of people only wanted to do, but you did it and still doing it. Right. So it's awesome. Yeah, because like what ended up happening is um, 2014, I ended up taking off again, and like mm-hmm. I, you know, I wasn't planning on racing at all, but you know, I, um, you know, in fall of 2014, that's when I was enrolling in school, mm-hmm. so I needed to have a downhill bike because you know that's one of the reasons why right. I got a scholarship to go to school, not mm-hmm. a full ride, but right, you know, a decent amount of change, um, and so it's like I, right, well, I haven't done a downhill race in forever, um. I mean, a year mm-hmm. and you know collegiate nationals is coming up let's let's see if i'm like still any good and like, i was on a like a specialized status which for downhill is a kind of a low-end bike mm-hmm. i you know i upgraded some of the parts and i ended up winning collegiate nationals wow and um you know like this was against a lot of like good riders like um Shane Leslie and Max Morgan Walker Shaw um actually Walker was in a different category but you know not no name riders. Like there's a lot of good riders doing collegiate. Mm-hmm. And it was at that point I was like, whoa, maybe I should get back into racing. Give it a whirl, right? And a friend stepped up. Uh, he owns um, twelve bike shops in the New York City and um, like outskirts uh, suburbs. Okay. And like they were willing to help me out and uh, supply me with a bike. And um, so uh, that's Danny Cycles. Oh, okay, okay. I, I actually won. Uh, uh, yeah, I, they're really nice guys, right? I, I won. Uh, I was at a, a downhill uh, festival, and they had a stand over there, and I won like a fifty dollars coupon to them, and um, it's really cool. I'm like, look, you guys are so nice, but I live in the freaking nowhere's land, so I don't have any more. There's no way I can ever go to your store. And they're like, well, we'll, we'll make it an online coupon. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they're very nice guys. I I, I follow them on, on the social media channels. They're really cool. That's, that's too funny huh small world yeah um, yeah yeah very nice well anyway in 2015 like they took me across the country in like an rv like phenomenal oh, wow. year and um i'm just gonna sum it up like by the end of that year i was competing in the 2000 uh, like a world cup at Wind- in windham new york okay okay and uh, i qualified 24th okay awesome awesome and like I had a, you know, just what I thought was kind of a mediocre run. Like I was like, I've never done a world cup before except for Norway, but I never qualified. Mm-hmm. And here I am, like, I'm like one or two spots behind Sam Hill. And I, I we, we, you know, we know these names, like these are pros, you know? So, and, and, and they're like, those are real pros. Yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Wow. And you got the ride with them, which is awesome. Yeah, and like so, it's like whoa, like you know. Um, so you qualify, and then the next day is the real race, mm-hmm. and so you get to practice on the course with like the right. big guys. Yeah, and um, you know, like I was feeling pretty good, and like you know, my race run, I end up crashing, and like I threw it away. Mm-hmm. But um, between the first split and second split, mm-hmm. I had the most pinned run ever. Yeah, and if you look at the split times before between that, I was actually the eighth fastest rider on course, ah, ahead of awesome. G. Atherton. Wow. So, so as far as pros go, then who who do you look to as your pro? Like like who who because like you know we're mentioned names and stuff like mm-hmm. that, but I mean as a pro, who who who's your who's your guy? You know or gal? Who I mean you know. Um. 
Well, it depends. I, I respect a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. Um, my go-to is obviously Aaron Gwynn. Um, amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, phenomenal. Um, but n- like not only a talented rider, but super, super nice guy. Um, it, it's hard to like see that in per- like when you don't actually see these people in person. Mm-hmm. But in person, like he is one, like he's very humble. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like he he will talk to you, like help you out. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I, I want to see him do well, but like, I, Danny Hart just because of his wild riding style. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's cool to see like those two go back to back. But That's I'm cool. also pretty close friends with Nico. Okay, nice. Um, I'm not gonna say I'm like buddy buddy with him, but he lives in yeah. the North Carolina area, mm-hmm. so I, I I definitely like to I, I pull for him. I like mm-hmm. to see him do well. Awesome. Let me let me ask you this: one of the reasons why I didn't go pro, besides the <laughs> fact that I have no talent, um, leaving that aside, um, I was always afraid that if I tried to get too competitive, I wouldn't be able to enjoy the sport anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, because um, every time I went out and ride or rode. I'd be thinking, oh, you know, I, I got to practice this. Like, what was my time on that? And I wouldn't be able to socialize and enjoy it with my friends. And did that ever happen to you where you had to say, well, wait a minute. I love this sport because it's just fun and it, and it took over. Yes, um, that, that that does happen. And um, I, I try to keep things in, uh, put things into perspective. Um I like, I don't know if I should admit this or, but like, I don't like, I don't like training and I don't train <laughs> very much. Okay. Um, like, you know, as far as like athletic ability, like or athletic, um, you know, cardio, that kind of stuff. Like I'm, I'm pretty low on the totem pole. Okay. Uh, d- just cause to me, like biking should be fun and I, I'm more concentrated on having fun and skills compared to necessarily cardio. You know, I, I, I do go out on rides and mm-hmm. like try to push myself, but, um, you know, a lot of pros, they have like training plans. And like, once you get too focused on that, like to me that like, that just like sucks everything that I'm about. Right. Right. Out of, like out of the sport. So, um, you gotta I, have I a tried, balance. Exactly. You know, some people will like thrive on that personally, that that's not my style. Mm-hmm. Well, that explains one of the other questions I want to ask you. Uh, what's this deal with the game of bike? A lot of your videos talk about this game. Man, like you even said, I got to learn how to wheelie. If I don't learn how to wheelie, that's an instant letter on the game of bike. I'm screwed. I'm like, this guy is possessed by this game of bike. What the hell's with this man? Uh, so, okay. <laughs> sorry, I'm just taking my keys off like there. Um, so, yes, I like, I think <laughs> there it comes. I think inherently, like anyone who becomes a good rider, okay. is competitive, um, whether they compete or not. Okay. Um, so, like, whether you're just riding with your friends, like, oh, I want to be better than them. Um, so, growing up riding BMX, like, the game of bike is like the game you play in the skate parks or everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, so you just fool around, learning new tricks and learning different ways you can get like letters on other riders, right? And it's just fun, like so. I don't, I don't mean like that seriously, but it, like it's still nice. Like, no matter how like relaxed you are, you're always a little bit competitive. Mm-hmm. But like, not like not in a way like, oh, I'm gonna st- st- like throw a stick in your spoke and like <laughs> I'm winning this game. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like I, I like to see people like um, better themselves. Good. So. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, which is not a downhill. Well, well the, tell me about the urban downhill race. You did. <laughs> I watched that video. You had a, a POV cam of that. The reason why I want you to we, – okay, why am I asking you this? Okay, most of the people that are watching this will have the ability to try downhill or cross cut. It's very few people that will ever get the chance to try an urban downhill race. What the mm-hmm. hell is that like, dude? dude i don't even know like that <laughs> that was such a crazy experience um it it's weird because like you know like in typical downhill race you practice saturday and you ride sunday like okay. it's a it's a formula that's pretty much followed everywhere sometimes you get extra day of practice that race takes place on one day wow so you like get there at like seven or eight in the morning and you have like two hours of practice mm-hmm. um they barely finished setting up the course um, and so like you got like one, like walk through the course 
And, you know, as someone who's ridden BMX and ridden street, I felt like I had a little bit of an advantage because, like, to me, like, I've never ridden a downhill bike downstairs or, like, right. gap stairs, but, like, I feel like I can relate to that. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, all right, I, I should be good. But something that you just don't, like, know how to deal with is, like, the fans who are just, like, Right there on you, right there. Yeah, Yeah. it's like Group B rally, like from the eighties or (laughs) nineties. Like it's like they're parting, like like the way as you're coming through. So it's like visually, you're used to having like this, you know, twenty foot wide course with no obstructions. But here you're like, you know, like these people moving away, and you're kind of they're they're uh, revealing the course. So that part was crazy. That's weird. Yeah, because I mean, even on a downhill or any or any course, it's it's it's. It's taped. I mean, it's that's the course. Get the hell off the course. But these people yeah. were like in the course. Like that's 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 it's the same. Because I mean, those those races are just crazy. They're like right in the city. You know. I mean, that's the cool part because you're taking the race to the fans instead of having the fans, you know, get into their yeah. car, like spend money, like go to the race, like, mm-hmm. and you know, you end up with like twenty fans on the side of the like course. Yeah. Here you had like twenty. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like twenty to like wow. fourteen thousand fans. Like it was, wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that that I could see that being um, a bit like like what's going on here because you can't you can't relate it to anything else. You know, I mean, it's just insane. As, as it is, you're already doing something that is very hard to compare to anything else. Um, but now you've got these people all over the place. That's just yeah. I figured it had to be kind of just amazing. You know. Yeah, to, it, to me, it was more of an experience than, like, a race. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a race. Um, like, But the thing is, like, my first practice run, like, I don't know if you saw, um, I have two videos. I have one of the actual race, and then I, on Facebook, I had a video of my first practice run where I, like, did the thing that I was scared uh, most about, and that, like, the first set of stairs, it was, like, eight flights of stairs, like, and... Um, like my suspension bucked me over the bars. Oh shit! And like I still had a flight of stairs to go, so I like felt like eight feet to like Ugh. tar, and whew, like OTB that is. And mm-hmm. like, man, th- that crash rung my yeah. bell pretty hard. Yeah, I'm sure of it. I mean, it's not even anything soft. It, 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 yeah, not not that not that the dirt on a trail is, is you could hit a rock, but I mean, like you had nothing but just nothing yeah like oh, dirt dirt is forgiving like mm-hmm. it has a little yeah. bit of give like right. you, you can slide on it mm-hmm. tar no well this leads us to the next crazy thing you've done probably one of your more popular videos <laughs> i know where this is going right why the hell did you choose to take that huffy downhill and 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 you are very lucky to be able to tell people about it like what brought that one on man you, you know i i think um so I, this kind of started before sus video um, I think this is like something that like people always rag on like, you know, Walmart um, mm-hmm. bikes are sold in Walmart, mm-hmm. whether it's Huffy or uh, next. Um, so like, we're always like wondering like, Oh, will it survive? Mm-hmm. And then like, you know, Seth's channel came us uh, Seth bike hacks. This right. is yeah. his channel came about and he like started doing like a torture test on his uh, like um, uh, wild goose as he calls it yeah the wild goose. yeah and it's like oh man someone beat me to it like mm-hmm. this, this is an awesome video um and then like i actually met up with him and like you know i told him about my idea i'm like listen like i liked your your video idea like like would you be cool if like i kind of followed that up mm-hmm. and uh you know t- took one of these bike down like a downhill race course right that was the original idea i want like because i went to a downhill race with um that bike and like after the race was done i was planning on doing a run on that bike oh wow so i was planning on doing two runs Mm -hmm. um and so like i can't remember if it was friday or it was saturday or sunday i was like Mm -hmm. um you know like i'd gone to this race and like stopped at walmart i had a gift card and i was like i'm going to use that money and buy like this bike that i'd done a little research right. on because it, it actually looked like a cool bike it looked pretty cool it had the, the, the the 27 plus uh 27 5 plus tires i mean it looked like a pretty darn cool looking bike as far as like trends go like i think huffy was like it, they're right on top of like the trends because like i feel like 27 plus just came out and it's already in like walmart it's like yeah wow yeah um and so i took it there like at 
I I really thought it was going to hold up a little bit better than it did. Like I was like, I was pretty confident. I'm like, all right, we're going to do this, and like I'm just going to hit some jumps, mm-hmm. and it's going to be fun. But like I brought my, you know, I had my friend with that had his GoPro. Right. I had like three GoPros on me. And the funny thing is, I thought getting to the like main jump trail was going to be, um. I thought that was going to be the hard part because mm-hmm. like that was like actual downhill right, right. sketchy and that turned out to be pretty easy. Like that the bike handled that relatively well, mm-hmm. but once you got into like the big compressions, like because of like some of the cheap components, like right. they just couldn't hold up to that. I mean, I, I was and, just listening to you going, Oh, well, there goes the brakes <laughs> and, and the handlebars are over. I'm like, what the hell? The, like, Holy Christ. You know, this, this guy's not going to make it. Um, I'm, I'm certainly glad you did, but, um, Me too. Whoa! I I I was like, that's awful ballsy, dude. No oh, man. Yeah. So like, I started out really confident, and then like, you know, after that, like, I was like, I'm not confident <laughs> anymore. <laughs> oh man. Well, look, I have I got two more I want to ask you over here because sure. I'm, I'm taking a look at the clock over here. But there was a couple I wanted to ask you. Um, a big one is going to be so. What what's your, what's your what's your goal now? As, as, you know, as this pro, like, um, obviously you're going to college for, for mm-hmm. business or, you know, so, so you're going to go into another direction, but, uh, your, your big hurrah, what, what do you want to do with this? What do you want to say you did? You know what? I'm less focused on racing, uh, these days. Like, okay. um, UCI just passed like another rule where you need to 40 UCI points to compete in world cups. Okay. And as like a American rider with not many opportunities to earn these points, like, World Cups are kind of like out of question at this point. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm more or less focused on – I think I'm going to be devoting a lot more time just to YouTube and just like racing local races. Gotcha. Um, that doesn't sound like near like super exciting, but that's that's what I'm passionate about these days. Mm-hmm. Um, but like if we're talking about like where I want to head, mm-hmm. um, that, that my, my biggest goal is to kind of open up a bike park. Uh, nice. one secret. But on one of your earlier shows, Brian had mentioned uh, Country Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, like that clicked. I was like, crap. Yeah. That's the word I've been kind of looking be to awesome. describe. Because like, you know, everybody has like a mountain with downhill trails and like, mm-hmm. you know, it's fun. But it could be so much better than that. Like yeah. Camp Woodward, what they're doing with um, like skateboarding and BMX is phenomenal. It's, I haven't been. I've only seen pictures. It, it, it is. It looks insane. Like I would kind of like to bring something similar to that, like with the country club like aspect to the mountain bike world, and um, that's one of the things I would like to do. Like I'm, I'm hoping like uh, YouTube like can help me. Mm-hmm. I can use that to help like build my way, like create contacts to get there. Gotcha. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's going well. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, you've, you've, got, you've got a good following. A lot of people like what you do, and that's that's pretty awesome. And and a lot of people do follow you, which is what I want to lead to probably the last question over here. Um, for the folks that do follow you, um, certainly our younger group, um, if they did want to go pro or wanted to get into this a little bit deeper, um, what does it take? And, and uh, besides continuing the ride, what are some of the benefits? Like, like now we've just learned about scholarships. Like, this, you know, what, what do we tell these folks to, to help them along? Okay. Um, so I'm going to give a few uh, pieces of advice and then one part that might kind of be a little bit of a killjoy. Okay. Thanks. Um, so to be pro, like you, you really have to love something. Like, I don't mean like, Oh, I kind of like it. Like, you you have to be the kind of person who just goes out and rides bikes for no apparent apparent reason. Mm-hmm. You know, you like fiddle around. You just try to learn things that like have no like inherent purpose. You know, you're just kind of one of those people. So like, you're just riding your bike all the time. I'm sure that's a lot of advice that has been given to them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, the next thing is taking that, but start like doing a little competitions with yourself. It's like. Oh, how far can I do this jump? How mm-hmm. high can I do this jump? You know, even if you don't have any friends to push you, these are the like things that need to be going through your mind uh, to accomplish these things. Makes sense. Um, but here's where it gets a little, I don't know if morbid is the right term, but um, money. Um, yeah. 
I, I was very, very fortunate to have parents that supported me. They brought me to races, whether it was in BMX um, or downhill, and they provided me with bikes. Mm-hmm. Lots of kids are not um, – no, they don't have those opportunities. Yeah. And um, if you want to go pro you, you, and you're working a full-time job, it's really hard to devote the time you need to train with mm-hmm. that full-time job. So – that's where a lot of people like I'm. I'm sure Aaron, Aaron Gwynn wouldn't be where he uh, is without the financial stability that his I, his parents provided him. Like, mm-hmm. um, there are a few pros in the uh, U.S. at least that I know of who work full time and who are pro. I'm going to name one of them, and that's Sean Near. Okay, uh, he rides for Yeti. He's a downhill rider, but phenomenal rider. Totally humble, but he's one of the few guys who he works full time during the winter to earn the money to live in a van and travel to all the races. Wow. Um, and he's one of the few. So it's a shame. Um, I, I just don't think it's right. You know, that, that you have to do that to, 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 to fund this, the sport should have enough backing to fund it. It's just, it's just sad. I, I love watching it and it's being part of it. It's just, it's a tough one, man. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm going to add like another thought that just came to me. Um, the third thing about being a pro is most of us, um, I'm, I don't want to like, like we're essentially billboards for sponsors. Yeah. You know, like, you know, th- that's how we are able to um, do what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of these sponsors are awesome. Don't like, yeah. you know, but so sp- like sponsors are looking to get their name out. Mm-hmm. Like, sure. So, like, their goal is to get their product um, in front of the most people as possible. Mm -hmm. Race results don't really do that. Like, Mm. you can can win, like, the Eastern States Cup Series, but Joe Chameau down the road, who's mountain biking, probably has never heard of the Eastern States Cup Series. And, you know, you you might be one of the best riders, but he still doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know that you're running these products. So... But he might be following, you know, this random person doing this stupid, silly, awesome trick on Instagram. Like, whoa, right. hey, Gene, check this out. Like, this dude's awesome. Like, yeah. Well, so, I mean, th- that goes back to like the YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I- I'm 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 actually looking to pick up one of those Diamondback Sinker Pros. That's mm-hmm. one of, one of the bikes that that uh, Seth runs. Yeah, um, it's a really cool bike. It's good bike. I've got some connections where I'm going to be able to get something uh, well. So I'm going to go that route. But I was talking to Diamondback. Can't get one right now. The 2016, they're all sold out. A big reason they're sold out is because of Seth. He's not a pro. Yeah. He, 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 he's a computer nerd like me <laughs> running a YouTube channel. I think he's got over 80,000 followers now. Uh, he has 150. Well, holy. Like, oh, I didn't keep up with it at all. I mean, it's, it's way up there then. And um, like that's going to get... Um, a, a company a lot more press and a lot more mm-hmm. you know than like you said winning winning like one one race in a place that there may only be you know if you're lucky maybe a couple hundred to a thousand people viewing it and it's not televised you know yeah. and that, that that's being generous because yeah. honestly most people like there there's probably only like a hundred people total our race like i don't know how much the word spreads but mm. well it is what it is yeah i mean i like uh, you know, you have to evolve with like you know the trends. Like you, like I think too many racers are in the mindset of, like if I do well at a race, I will get sponsored, and you have to be a little bit more forward thinking in, especially in the age of the internet. Um, you need to think of like other opportunities uh, to get yourself in front of other people. Yeah, it's true. That makes a lot um, of sense. Well, at least it's really good advice for people that want to get into this. Um, they need to understand what what the good and the bad is, right? And mm-hmm. then then you know then then you make your own make your own mind up on it. Sure, absolutely. Well, look before I let you go, um, I want to make sure I give a shout out. You know how I do these things over absolutely. here with with my little picture over there. So so behind your head right now is a uh, yeah. Watch out, dude! Uh, is a picture from um, Black and White Mountain Bike. Um, make sure I pronounce that thing. Well, no, I pronounced it right, but I think he goes yeah, Black and White MTB rather on Instagram. Um, what he does, which is pretty cool, he takes a lot of the mountain biking um, pictures that he finds on Instagram or some of the ones he takes himself, and obviously they're black and white, 
but he does some, you know, contrast, some, some work to him, and, and makes some pretty cool photos. So right now you've got one of the 661 protection ones. You've got the guy flying up in the air. He's right about smacking our heads in between us. And, um, you know, he said it was pretty cool to use his video. He tagged me. So if you want your picture in, the, uh, in one of these videos, um, tag RGMTB on Instagram or Twitter. Let me know you want the picture on there. Um, like I said, I, I, I'd rather have you tag me because um, some of the friends I've connected with, they're private accounts, and I don't feel it's cool for me to show a picture that might be private. Um, so let me know if you want it. RGMTB on Instagram or Twitter. Tag me, and I'll put your picture up in one of these videos, all right? This one was from Black and White um, Mountain Bike. Thanks a lot, dude. You'll catch up on Instagram. I'll have all the info on the screen. I'm actually going to do a little uh, Inst- oh, a Snapchat plug-in right here. Like, <laughs> right on. There it is, man. <laughs> Hey, dude, it was well, – fir- thank you. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. When is this uh, – when you put on airing this? This one's going to be on uh, next week on Thursday. I try to put All these right. out on Thursday. Plus, it gives me a little bit of time because I do have a full-time job as well where I'm a Absolutely. computer nerd and, 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 and a husband and, and a dad of two little beautiful munchkins. So it's, it's <laughs> tough to fit it all in. So I'll have this out next week on Thursday. Um, yeah, but you know, look, I got to thank you so much for reaching out. You do go with the, the theme that Brian and I had that all downhill mountain bikers are just good pro guys and nice people. I really hope I get to meet up with your ride with you one day. It'd be a pleasure. It really would be awesome. I mean, if you live near Mountain Creek, it's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll just, I would have probably seen you at one of the races there. I just didn't, I didn't get to that one. I'll, I'll, I, will, I will definitely see you sometime and that will just be awesome. Dude, that, I, I, I have a feeling we've probably crossed paths oh, yeah. without <laughs> – We have because I, I was at all the U.S. Opens because I, yeah. I, I ran the rental shop there. So at every U.S. Open, I was there. When, so, so we did. We did. You know, I was one of the guys going, whoa, look at that guy. He just <laughs> did. Yeah. All right, my friend. Well, look, thank you so much for being on Bike Chat tonight. Everyone, you know, hope you enjoyed the chat with us. Uh, this one went a little bit longer, but I just didn't want to say goodbye. I was having such a good conversation with my new friend over here. So, uh, folks, hope you like this one. Let me know what else you want to see on the show. And, Phil, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Right, catch you later, my friend. See ya. <laughs>